rich men or for rich men. Lord knows they all just want to have total control. <laughs> that is such a valuable piece of advice there. These are the sorts of things that we should talk about right in the first five minutes of the podcast. That of giving people three quotes. In sunshine and rainbows, it is isn't a thing for just being a solo operator. The change in mindset makes a massive difference. Welcome to Aussie Lawn Stars. Welcome to the dungeon. Today we've got Hayden Scott with me. How are you doing, Hayden? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Now, I've been looking forward to doing this interview. One of the reasons I'm really looking forward to this one is because you came to me a while ago and asked about robotic mowers, and I'm like, oh, I get to talk about robots again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm really, um, really interested in in um, in all that sort of side of things and, and the technology that's coming out. And um, I think you're implementing it a bit into your business. And, um, yeah, it's really, I find that really interesting, not something that I know a lot about, but, yeah, keen to learn more, that side of things. Yeah. Well, look, I've been playing with robots for a couple of years now and the th- the, it gets me going talking about robots and motorbikes. So those two things, if we get too far down the rabbit hole, we might have to rein it in. But, yeah, I, um, I can't, can't contribute too much about um, motorbikes, that's for sure. Sorry. Oh, look, there, there's people saying things right now because uh, in the last week I've had people commenting to me saying when they hear the motorbike talk come up, they just switch it off. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's probably plenty that love it too. Oh, yeah, there is. I've definitely got some motorbike fans. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the robotic mowers has been really interesting. Last week I was having a look at a new one that is hitting the market as we speak. And it is priced at a price point that is affordable and it doesn't need a wire in the ground. So for people looking at robotic mowers, these are going to be hesitant to use the word revolutionary, but it really is. It's going to dominate the market because up until now robot mowers were either quite expensive or pretty nasty in terms of the cheap side of things Um, yeah that's that's exactly what i've sort of been interested in and now that you've got that sort of set and forget sort of aspect with the the gps um navigation i think that's a game changer for it yeah um yeah. If you look at the current range of robotic mowers, you're sort of looking around that one thousand to fifteen hundred dollar mark for the cheap ones that you you cringe at when you see them come up, and then they they work. They just <laughs> yeah, a little bit frustrating because they're cheap, and along with cheap comes some of the cheap problems. But then you go to the more expensive ones, and I think you're starting around three to four thousand dollars for half decent brand that does offer some pretty good options, pretty good features. Now we're looking at one that's hitting the market, $2,000, no wire needed in the ground and easy for end user to install. So that's going to be a game changer for that. Like you right. said, forget, um, you drop it on a property, five minutes to run around with doing the mapping, set up the charging station, done. Yeah, what brand is that one? Segway. Okay, right. Well, the um, the uh, mower store in Toowoomba I just went to last week, they've got the Segway, so yeah, yeah I'll have to keep an eye out for that. Yeah, so Segway's had the H-Series out for a year or so now, and this is the new version, the I-Series. So the I-Series is aimed for smaller yards, so 500 to 800 square metre properties. And, yeah, the price point for the 500 is just under $2,000, so 1999 And then the 800-square-metre property one will do come in at 2399 Yeah, that's getting very reasonable, isn't it? That hits the mark for a lot of people because mm. even so my place here, I've got a 1,600-square-metre property and my dad's property backs onto mine. So I've got a robot that can do my dad's lawn and my lawn and they're both 1600 square meter blocks they're not even quarter acre they're almost double quarter acre blocks so this robot will do most of my dad's lawn and of most of my lawn without doing the roadside verge and it only needs to do 900 square meters of lawn to do that comfortably <laughs> so when you say you've got a 1600 square meter property you probably have 600 square meters of lawn at most 
yeah, that's it. Um, that's yeah, that'll be interesting to see how you go with that. And I, everything I've heard to it, you get a really your lawn looks a lot better because of the frequency of the the cuts you're getting. Obviously, you know you're doing it every day. So yeah. When it comes to the things you can do to make your lawn look better, cut frequency is the number mm. one on my list. It's the best thing for improving your lawn quality. There are other things you need to do, but that's, <laughs> that's yeah, that's it. I I shared a photo of my backyard on the local community group last week because somebody's dogs were running around, and I locked them up in my yard till I found out who owned them. And the first comment was not about the dogs; it was like, "Wow, your lawn looks so good for this time of year." Cause Around here, there you go. Getting zero degrees and single digits, low low single digits all the time. So lawns look horrible this time of year. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And so that's great advertising for you too. Just drop the odd missing dog post in the in the <laughs> local page. Oh, it was brilliant. The comment, yeah. the comment was there, and I couldn't help myself. I was like, "Yep, that's because I got a robotic mama doing the job for me." <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see how these ones go, but I, I'm predicting they're going to sell 10 to 1 compared to the older robots that don't hit the mark on pricing or quality. Yeah, well, I'm tempted to get a, um, one of those segues. I've got um, a fairly large backyard here, but I've got a couple of bigger dogs, so, you know, see how it goes with that. And it's not the nicest quality grass out the back. It's um, yeah. a lot of, lot of the winter weeds and that that I've haven't spent much time we've put a pool in the back and done a few things so yeah it's all it um on the to-do list to 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 um get the lawn looking a lot better so i think you know just the robot there would be um the robot more would be great because you're getting the the cutting frequency up and yeah something i might look at well, this then answers 90% of the questions that are blockages for people. So if you look at people asking questions about robots, as a, they're asking questions to exclude the robot as an option for them, right? And 90% of those questions, this gives a tick instead of a box. So it's saying, yeah, this is a good option for you. The two things that come up um, at the moment are going to be the slopes. So mm. if you've got slopes that are more than about 10 degrees then you start questioning whether a robot is the right mower for your property and there are options for all-terrain robots um but then the other thing is if you've got a lot of trees with um branches dropping all the time robots struggle with constantly having sticks on the lawn in front of them yeah no i'm fine for both of them so it should should be a good um and i like the idea of just testing it all out here first before i obviously recommend it to people um, because that's something I I think there's a big market for and like you've done, um, you set it up for, for customers and maintain it for them and I think that's a great um, great idea. Yeah, well, I think that first, first step is the proof of good use case there. So proof of market share is really important and then after that you start looking at different business models as to where a robot is valuable for a business to sell it. That's right. So for lawn contractors, it's it's an addition to their business to reduce their labour or increase the services that they offer on a particular property. Oh, definitely, and um, and just offer more solutions. I think for people, yeah. Like like I said, it's <clears throat> ten times better lawn than it was beforehand. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's a good enough reason, isn't it, for a lot of people? It checks a massive box for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, Hayden, we we sort of got distracted before we even introduced you to everyone. We did mention your name, but we want to tell people more about you. So, help me fill in the gaps. So I know that you are in Queensland, and you're in south, not southeast, but southwest almost, isn't sort of that's in it. The um, it's called Dolby. Yeah, that's it. So I'm in Dolby, which is um, about two and a half hours out of Brisbane, um, about an hour um, out of Toowoomba. Yeah, we moved here about two years ago um, from the Gold Coast. Um, I moved here with my family. My wife's a teacher and she got a transfer out to a local school here. And we've nice. done, 
Yeah, we ha- we both lived on the Gold Coast for about forty years and forty right. odd years, and needed a change and um, yeah, just a whole different lifestyle and um, yeah, a, yeah, a bit of a getting a bit of a rat race there and that sort of thing, and not to mention the property prices and things like that. So yeah, yeah and we're enjoying it here, and yeah, it's been a been a nice move for us. I was just on the Gold Coast last week, and I can attest to that. The traffic mm. thing there, as soon as you hit traffic at the wrong time of day, it's just blocked. But um, yeah, that's it. I was I actually drove through Dolby twice in July, so once yeah. heading up York and once heading back down again. And it's not the sort of place you expect to drive through. But there I was. If I'd known, I would have uh, been able to give you a call and say, "Hey, let's meet up for lunch." But uh, yeah, it would have been been great. But um, but yeah, it's not a it's not a place that a lot of people visit but a lot of caravanners and that sort of thing pass through so yeah it's, it's a it's a really nice small town yeah well i, I yeah. stopped there, grabbed some fuel grabbed some lunch and kept on running <laughs> yeah that's it but um but yeah it's a big sort of farming um farming area and yeah rural um bit of gas industry as well close right. um yeah so yeah. When you moved there, you said you moved because your wife got offered a job there as a teacher. And were you working somewhere else at the time? Yeah, I worked um, on the for the council on the Gold Coast, and then sort of COVID hit, and um, it was really poorly handled by management and that sort of thing. And yeah, that, I left a after. Rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and. Um, yeah, but just a um, lot of issues there with politics and same old story. But um, I was ready for a change anyway, and I'd sort of talk, tried to talk my wife into moving out into the country a bit for a while, and yeah, and finally got her to agree. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and we, you know, like we live on an acre now, which is tiny for here, but um, it's. God, we're never ever. I don't think there's even any acre properties left on the Gold Coast for sale. There probably <laughs> is, but but you know, you're talking millions. But um, oh, mil- multiple yeah, millions, yeah, yeah, that, that's right. So it that's became out of our reach, and um, yeah, and you know, just little things that it's a lot more of a community sort of feel to it, and and that, and really like Toowoomba as well. I do a fair bit of my work in Toowoomba. Yeah, uh, which is a really nice town, uh, city. city what is it? A half hour, forty-five minute drive to Toowoomba. Uh, yeah, about fifty, about fifty minutes here. Efficiency is the thing that rules a business, and the decisions you make as a small business owner. Right mowers give you the options in their product lineup to match efficiency with size fuel usage and the type of jobs you want to target, from catching to mulching or side discharge from roadside verges to acreages and manicured lawns to six feet tall and super long. I've been using the right Stander I 42 inch with a catch pro for manicured areas and the Stander ZK61 to maximise productivity for large open acreage mowing. If you need to replace your push mower, try the 32 inch Stander B. If you have more open access to residential properties, there's a 42 through 48 inch option that suits you. And if you want to enter the acreage market, the 52, 61 and 72 inch machines have choices in engine size and model type to suit the work you want it to do. Right standards go the distance, saving you time and money season after season. Nice. So when you moved, I'm guessing you didn't start your business up straight away. No, and then I worked for um, the councils here for a bit, and then I worked for QR as well. Um, just say so I just really over that sort of stage of life of working with a lot of um, the government departments, you know, too much bureaucracy and um, yeah. red tape and that sort of thing. And um, I just wanted to have a go at my doing this um, myself, yeah, yeah, and running my own business and, you know, making me, uh, my own mistakes and, yeah, that sort of thing and just answering to my, being my own boss and, yeah. Yeah, so a big part of that is to not be responsible to somebody else, particularly when they're incompetent. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly it. 
not naming and shaming, but you know, it's no, <laughs> one of those that's, things that that's, that's, uh, that's certainly I've worked for some shocking um, people that class themselves as leaders, you know, in in my time, and yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, so you get a lot of benefits when you work for yourself in terms of having freedom to choose what you do, how much time you work, spend more time with the family, although it doesn't always end up being that, does it? Sometimes. No, that's exactly it. Spending more time working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But um, it's it's certainly got its benefits there and you can, you know, you can have a day off if you need to and that sort of thing. It, it's great. So did you think about it for long before you made the decision? Was it something you'd spent six months, four months deliberating on, looking at all the options? Or? Um, it, it's actually, it started about a year ago, exactly today. I saw an uh, in my Facebook and it come up for a gyms franchise. Um, yeah. And I sort of, I contacted them about that. But at the time it was really um there wasn't any rain sort of for about three or four months, probably yeah. even longer. And it was heading into October and I got I got really worried and pulled out at the last minute and um, decided against it for a few different reasons, including the, the, you know, the weather was a huge part of it. They were predicting then, that it was going to be a really dry mm, summer. That's, so, that's exactly that, right. October, you're starting to sweat it, going, is there going to be a lot of work coming in or is it going to be nothing? And, yeah, I mean, it came wet, obviously, the history. <laughs> is that, yeah. Well, you, first of yeah. all, they were talking about a um, El Nino, you know, the, the drought one, and then it was uh, – before you knew it, it was, oh, hang on a minute, it's La Nina, you know. It was within a few weeks and then it never stopped raining for yeah. probably four or five months. And then um, then I found out about um, Fox and I did a bit of research on them and, and yeah. Um, yeah, and I really – I spoke to Leo, who's my franchisor, and I got a really good um, impression of him and, um, yeah, and I went with, with the Fox um, franchise. I've tried reaching out to Leo to do an interview with me, but I haven't been able to get him on the phone so far. So if you're talking to him, tell him he owes me an interview. <laughs> okay, I will. I'll um, I'll have to tell him. You're, yeah, you're chasing an interview. I've I've done an interview with Jim Henman, and I've talked to a number of Jim's franchises. I've talked to a couple of Fox franchises along the way as well, but certainly I'm pretty passionate about telling people the, the options between going independent and choosing a franchise it's there's a lot of value in going down that path of being a franchise rather than being independent and they both have pros and cons but certainly there's a lot of advantages when you join a franchise yeah definitely and um, my, my main reasons were for the support like I'm in a new um, new town where I live and don't know a lot of people and just I thought it'd be too much of a struggle here competing against the guys that are already established and built up their businesses and um you know and I just needed a bit of bit of uh, just a support maybe mainly and that they've been excellent for that so what's the population in um Dolby I think it's about 15,000 yeah, yeah. That explains why you spend a bit of time up at Toowoomba then. Yeah, that's right. And um, and that was another reason why I, I went with Fox because Leo was advising that it's better to, to do both, you know, till till you've got enough work to – till I've got enough work to make a go of it here in, in Dolby, which could take a long time. And yeah. you can easily find enough work in Dolby because I know the population numbers there, there will be – quite a few lawn contractors in Dolby already and they'll have work. It's not a shortage of work, but lawn contractors, they get their name through word of mouth and yeah. you can build a really tight route density, but you've got to break that line in the sand where you go, okay, I've got enough work that I can filter out the work that is not good value. And once That's you break, exactly. Yeah, once you break that point in that close proximity to home, then you start working out if your numbers are looking good. And we're going to come back around to talk about numbers later on in your interview. So that'd be interesting to, to talk about what that looks like. But I, I love talking about that stuff. So 
you going back to your story, you've you've reached that point where you started the Fox franchise, and um, did you get a, enough support to make a decent income straight away, or did it take you a few months to sort of? Do uh, do it's still still looking very nowhere near where I'd like to be there. Um, okay. I, you know, I had um had a rough start. I think I mentioned to you that I had the house fire, and that may that was the week I started the um. The franchise and that meant I just wasn't able to give it everything in terms of I had to be home at certain times and that with dealing with the trades people and mm, it just put a bit yeah and that wasn't ideal and that was a time where I needed to be just giving it everything and getting a lot of the um building up my regulars and I've just found that it's it's just uh, probably been a lot harder than I thought in terms of building that up because, you know, a lot, especially uh, in this uh, area, a lot of people mow their own lawns and they've got their own, they've got their own um, ride-ons and that sort of thing. So, you know, and it's, yeah, it takes time to build those, those regulars up. Um, Yeah. So you'd be able to build up a substantial amount of business up at Toowoomba compared to in Dolby itself. But, yeah, but I'm, yeah, that's right. It goes back to what I was saying. You've really got to ramp it up to get that momentum going in the start. And once you achieve the numbers you need, then you start that building process. So in a suburban area in the middle of Brisbane or the Gold Coast, you can do that really quickly. But in Dolby and moving between Dolby and Toowoomba takes a bit more effort. But you'll get there. That's and, right. Yeah. How much of your schedule would you say you've filled at the moment? Are you 50%, 80% full? Ah, oh, probably 50%. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got plenty of room to grow. And, you know, the last few months have definitely been um, been tough, but we've we've had my wife's um, wage to rely, to help out a lot, you know, and that's that's been good. Um but, you know, look, it is tough. I knew it was going to be tough starting in this, hmm. In this, um, you know, even with the leads coming in, it's still hard, you know. And a lot of the jobs that I've sort of got through leads, that a lot of them are just one-offs where people will just get you there for, you know, the, the one-off cleanup and that sort yeah. of thing. Yep. So something I think is worth thinking about there, one, the your first winter, you feel mm. like you've got absolutely nothing. Even if you've got a full schedule in summer, we come to winter and all of a sudden you're yeah. victims and you go get a job at Coles or Domino's even. It's uh, that desperate. But <clears throat> once you get busy again, so we're not quite in September yet. We're sort of another week or two till we hit September. It's really end of September before they that ramps back up to full season again. And Dolby's a little bit different to where I am, but I think... An hour down the road from Dolby, you're in a lot colder climate, so you'll probably ramp up a bit before some of the places further south. Yeah. You. Yeah, and they're tipping it's going to be an early season. Like uh, I'm hearing a bit of that. So, And plus we just had some good rain, so that should all help with that. But you, um, might, you might have one or two winters before you really get used to the seasonal changes and how much you yeah. have to schedule. You probably find coming out of winter, you're going to be working really hard to try and fill your schedule and all of a sudden you're going to have too much work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's what I'm hoping, you know, and I think it. But people people that have been doing it a while, you know, they, they, they've got their regulars and it takes time to build up those good numbers. Unless you, uh, sometimes I think uh, some of the, like say when they buy into a franchise, they'll buy the run already. And that's that's probably a great way of doing it. But but I didn't have that um I wasn't able to do, to do that here. So yeah, yeah, I was just I'm really glad that they were um willing to give me a go. Yeah. Yep, that's good. It just means it takes a little bit longer for you to get it built up. That's it. That's that's right. Yeah, so are you doing mostly residential jobs at the moment or have you built up some commercial work as well? I have got a couple of commercial ones, yeah, but I'd like to be getting more of that and um, a couple of NDIS. And um, and some acreage? Yeah, uh, not a lot of acreage, just a couple of the um, the 
the vacant block cleans and um, okay. mowing and that sort of thing. But I'd like to get into more of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I know with, with residential jobs, you need probably between 60 and 150 mm. to really fill your books up if it's just residential work. And I've heard numbers anywhere in between that. But, uh, yeah, it certainly can take a little while to get a good full schedule with nice customers there, yeah. Yeah, that's it. And, you you know, you hear about some of the guys that have got 90-odd and that in, in the big cities and that's that's where I want to – I I don't think I'll ever have those sort of numbers out here, but, yeah, it'd be nice to be getting a lot more than I've, I've got, that's for sure. You, you could get the numbers, but I guess it's a matter of whether you want to focus on 90 residential customers or in your yeah. – I would imagine it's probably a good idea for you to build up a mix of residential, commercial, and acreage. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'd like to be to be getting into for sure. You find with commercial and acreage, you quickly find jobs that take up a full day a week or a full day a fortnight. So then you you don't need ninety of those because there ain't ninety days in a fortnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. And it's um, you know, it's just getting known and um, build, building that up and getting your name out there yeah that's it okay so <laughs> is there anything else about your business that we want to draw attention to in terms of what you've done so far um i've just i i, I think i just it's been a bit tougher than i would have hoped but that's yeah. been that's been a good thing and just you know like i am enjoying it um yeah yeah so i'm really really hopeful um it's going to be a big big summer and that's where i'm going to really grow because it's going to be my my first full yeah. summer yeah yeah so you started your business in february this year right yeah yeah it was sort of early february i did a did a bit of training there uh, the start of january yeah yeah, so straight in in the in the middle of the season, really. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. And it would have been would have been ideal, probably starting in October, that sort of thing, you know. But yeah, it's nice to get a full season for you for the start. But um, you've done pretty well to make a good start in February, anyway. That's right. That's so you, right. And you had the house fire in there. You got family. Um, kids, wife, all these things to juggle. Yeah, it's yeah. um, it's yeah. I've got four kids, and that's um, that gives me plenty of yeah, <laughs> keeps me busy there. Yeah, so you're you're probably similar age to me. Same, I've got four kids as well. That's um, you know, that's a lot to take on when you're just starting a business. <laughs> it is, but it's it's exciting as well. You know, it really is. Thank you for listening to Aussie Lawn Stars. Please remember to rate and review the show on the Apple Podcasts app or the player you use. Exciting new shows are released every Monday. Make sure you follow or subscribe to hear the next episode.